Tell this is vintage because they're still called the Redskins. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Like, political anger <laughs> on a Sunday morning. It's <laughs> <laughs> doing really well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Face the nation. <laughs> are we going to go with an official introduction or not? Or we, do we have a moderator? This is it? Are we into it? We're if so not, we'll, we'll do it. Can I have the, the only rule is, is for a panel that we're on, you have to introduce us as if you were a pro wrestling now. Yes. <laughs> He's going to get some literature to read. Here. Yeah. Got an issue of spawn. Oh, he's good for it, good for Wait for it. My hands are beginning to hurt. I got light swelling in my right palm. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome you to Phoenix Comic Con. One of the most sought-after writers of animation and comics of the last decade. <laughs> Adam Beechin serves as a producer and head writer for the hub's Transformers Robots in the Sky. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Beechin. <laughs> this gentleman is a veteran of storytelling and artist with credits of Cartoon Network. Warner Brothers, Jerry Bruckenheimer Films, NBC, Disney, Sony, Toy Biz, and Marvel Entertainment. Welcoming Shannon Eric Denton. With us, we have a WGA award-winning writer who has swiftly become the go-to guy for all the leading superhero at Warner Brothers Animation. Let's give a warm welcome to Heath Porcer! <laughs> Last but not least, he is an accomplished voiceover actor with more than 15 years of roles to his credit. Starting on Nickelodeon series, Rocket Power, ladies and gentlemen, Jason! Remember. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Thank Aww. you. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, my first prize. She's like throwing the stuff and putting people's yeah. eyes out. Robert Griffin the third is yours. You see the scar I got at a Comic Con answering question right. <laughs> uh, so here we are. Cool. Is there a list of questions or is this more significant to the audience? Yeah, we actually do have a mic here available if anybody wants to start lining up. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to one but, uh, caveat, we won't talk about animation at all. Right. <laughs> this is strictly about sports yeah. or painting. Sports management. Uh, houses. Uh, or, uh, <laughs> my favorite color is When it's done. <laughs> Anything with beige. Uh, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Next question. That's what we call a close. 
But if you have questions about animation or working in animation or about any of us, just come on, line up at the microphone and we'll be happy to talk to you. Let's do it. Let's do, uh, let's go ahead and start off with the first basic. How'd you get into animation? Sure. How'd you get into it? Yeah. Am I, am I she the question oh, first, then. She walked, yeah, she walked right up. You have something pressing? Something. Yeah. No, I know where. No, 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 no. no, no. We're here for you. <laughs> but I would like to hear that question. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'll start since I'm at the end. Of course, I have a microphone. Um, I ended, I was in Chicago doing theater, and one of my company adapted books to the stage that I uh, adapted and I directed. And one of, the, one of the plays that we did was off a comic book by Jill Thompson called Scary Godmother. And Jill was involved, and Jill actually did the adaptation with me and designed the show. So the costumes and the sets looked like you were walking into her comic book, which was unbelievable. Um, and then they sent someone, the, the company that owned the rights, which was at the time called Mainframe Entertainment, we all remember Mainframe, sure. uh, they sent someone to come see the show. And then they pulled me aside, I didn't know they were there, they pulled me aside and they said, this show is better than both scripts we've already written for the animated holiday special. Would you write the adaptation for the holiday special? And so I said, yeah, I would love to. And they said, oh, and by the way, since we've already paid for two scripts, we're out of money. So we have almost no money. <laughs> but I still did it because I was in Chicago at the time and I was like, this is a huge opportunity. So I did it with Jill. We adapted, um, we adapted the first book to, we adapted the show to the animation. And that, they run it on Cartoon Network every year since 2003. It's called Scary Godmother's Halloween Spooktacular. And that was my very first official credit and it was in animation. So from there I, I went to LA and uh, that was, that was my, that was my first big thing. Mm -hmm. uh, when I moved to Los Angeles to be a writer, one of the writing samples I had was for uh, a show called The Tick. You may remember The Tick. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and um, I was able to get meetings at animation studios fairly early on because they were more interested in looking at new talent. Uh, uh, people that they hadn't met before or people who had just come in in the unsolicited submissions or what have you. Translation um, cheap. Yeah, very cheap. <laughs> That's not cost. <laughs> and so I went into the meeting and they said, um, we loved this episode. We had no idea you had written this episode. And I, I, it wasn't an episode, it was a, just a script, that I, it was a sample. So I said, Thank you. <laughs> and um, they asked me if I wanted to write an episode of The Wild Thornberries, which was just starting up at that time. Uh, and I wrote an episode, and that led to being on staff the first two seasons of Thornberries, and then over to Rocket Power. Um, and that everything has come from that. So that's how I go. I, I won a contest. <laughs> Okay, that's so, such a lie. I, I, I've always been able to do voices ever since I was a kid, when you go to the TV, watching Hannah Barbera and Warner Brothers, you know, all that stuff. And I've always wanted to do voices. I moved to Los Angeles to do stand-up comedy and was not that great at it. But I had my, made my own demo reel of a cartoon that I had written and done all the voices in. And nobody in LA thought it was at any good at all. It was abysmal. I couldn't get a voice over it to save my life. And then I had a, commercial agent at the time who had a voiceover department down the hall. And I was always sticking my head in the voiceover department when I would come into the commercial department and just, you know, do stupid voices like, hello, how are you guys? And it was just awkward service there. And, but I wouldn't give up. Eventually, they had a, a non-union audition for a show called Sightings, which was about UFOs and stuff, the Paramount did. And since it was a non-union gig, none of their voiceover people wanted to touch it at the time. But they knew that I was crazy, and they were like, would you want to audition for this thing? I said, sure, I'm happy to do it. So they had me leave a voicemail on the casting directors. That my, my audition was a voicemail. Oh, oh, my audition was a call, this, call this number, and when it picks up, just leave a voicemail, and that's your audition. So I called up, and they needed the voice of a young Hebrew kid who saw this. But so this UFO up in this guy, and this UFO kid, and this guy. So I was like, okay, I can do that. So I asked my people to talk for me. I listened to him for five minutes. I was like, good, I got it. I left the voicemail. A little bit later, they called me back and said, we want to book him. He left it on but Shabbos. It, it, I left it on Shabbos. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately uh, we don't know if 
we don't know if you can get him to do this, but he's obviously not from this country in case you ask him to do a little bit less of an accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true because you're from Neptune. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not his country. Right. 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 So, so then don't make less Jew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do me a favor? <laughs> Could you just cut a little bit of the Jew out of that? <laughs> We're not going to be able to air it. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> now do the Jewish accent. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> the Jewish accent. I, I had that agent for all of a year. I didn't book any jobs. They let me go. I had a casting director. I was like, oh, look, now I don't have an agent. I didn't work the whole year. I had another agent, um, another casting director say, I know you don't have an agent. Would you come in and read for this? I read for a few things. And I was always asking, hey, I need another agent. You know anybody? And Talent Group Incorporated saw me on the advice of a casting director named Elaine Craig. And when I went into TGI, they liked, they liked my personality. They picked me up, and a week later, I was on Nickelodeon Drop It Up. So the moral of the story is, don't give up. There is no easy path, and if this is what you want to do, no one can tell you no, and you will fail, and until you succeed. Six months in, we found out Fox Kids was up the street. So we, uh, this is back in the day where you could just walk in the lobby and say, we're here for jobs. Which <laughs> <laughs> is exactly what we said, and uh, Gladys, to her credit, um, said, these dumb boys are so nice. I'm gonna call them nice security guard to throw them out. Uh, but a man who became my first boss, and many times over boss, was walking by and going, you know what, let's come here. And he pulled us aside, he said, let's see your portfolios. Looked through our portfolios and went, all right, Gladys, they start tomorrow, I'm going to lunch. And he walked off, and we're like, we don't really actually live in Los Angeles, we live like an hour south of here, so. Uh, <laughs> and the next day, I was working on the uh, X-Men cartoon. So, that's <laughs> uh, so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, Yeah, <laughs> Marvel Girl? That Marvel was you. Girl. That was yeah. you. Yeah. Cool. Hi, take your Hi. questions now. <laughs> All right, well, I'm actually going to school for 3D animation right now, and I'm, I'm kind of new to it, and I'm really nervous about how I'm going to be continuing it, because I don't know if I want to finish my associates and try going to local studios, or if I want to move on to a, a bigger school and work in 3D and then try for like the bigger animation studios, and it's just, I'm very nervous about trying to get out there. What would be your advice out there for like me. <laughs> being nervous is only natural. When you're being doing creative work, you're basically putting a piece of yourself out there for other people to see, and that can, that's very anxiety provoking. That can be very nerve-wracking. Um, the only thing I can, the only advice I can give you is, while I'm not an artist visually, as a voice actor, you just have to get past that. It's natural to be nervous. Let it motivate you, and let it not stop you. But keep putting yourself out there, and all you shouldn't wait for any moment. To, that's the right moment to put yourself in front of people. Because, you know, if you're no good, they probably will forget you. Right? But because, you know, that's just the way it's going to be. But if you're good and you're hiding something from them that, you know, shouldn't be more weak. Are you nervous about the money you're spending to get the degree, whether anybody cares about the degree? Uh, are you naturally nervous? Uh, it's, a lot of it's, more, it's more about like my, my readiness. I'm just nervous about how ready you're I am. You're never going to be ready when yeah. they hire you for that first job. Yeah. You, you may think, I'm finally, I look back at the guy who hired me, and I'm like, what was he thinking? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 I was so not ready for that. It was drunk, though. And then, then three years <laughs> earlier, when uh, I was trying to break into the business, and I thought, when I was trying to break into comics, and I thought I was ready, I was, wasn't ready. So there are, I was working on Spider Man two weeks ago, and went in to work on the show, and uh, you know, for the first week, I wasn't ready because I hadn't been working on that show for a while. So it's it's always uh, a matter of you know having that confidence 
It's going to get back what you were talking about. You're going to go in, and once you've been doing the job for a while, but you're in that I'm not doing the job for a while stage. So, um, uh, are you going to school out here? No, I, I'm from Austin. Okay. Oh, wow. Welcome. <laughs> 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 um, so, are you, are you, you say 2D, are you wanting to be a board person, a director, or a uh, character designer? Prop guy? Well, I was kind of thinking about, like, uh, I can't think of it right now on the spot. But, like, concept art, concept art, or character design, that sort of thing, I'd be interested in. But animation period, I'm still new to, so I'm still exploring all those different areas and seeing what I like. And I'm not done with the degree yet, yeah. but I could kind of see as I go through, you know, what I like. There are so many jobs right now compared to what there used to be. Yeah, there's just true. so much opportunity. I know like Austin is really growing in that area. Austin's got a great community. Yeah. And stuff too. I was working in a game company in Rhode Island a few years ago, and everybody moved to Austin after the game company closed down. So you've got so much opportunity in your backyard that networking is the most important part. I mean, outside of having the talent, but <laughs> the, the degree you'll get, I say get the degree, if it's giving you that time to work on your craft, mm -hmm. but nobody in 25 years of doing this has ever said, hey, where did you go to college? Right. Unless it's football season and I, that guy just happens to be another football fan, <laughs> which is like three people in all of animation that actually <laughs> <laughs> So it's a very small conversation, but really it's a conversation starter more than anything. You know, if you see an opportunity like, I went to Cal Arts, this guy went to Cal Arts, he's a director, that's just a great way to open a conversation, but it's not necessarily, they're gonna go back and like, let's look at their permanent Cal Arts record <laughs> and see how they did on the Photoshop. Well, I'm going to pull your transcripts, you just have to wait a second. <laughs> but that's what happens. They look at your portfolio, you get hired by your portfolio and by the recommendations of people. Right. Can I just jump in on that for a second? Because yeah, sure. the, other, the other benefits of, of a school is that you can get to know the alumni network. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, start investigating who from your school is working in animation currently and try and talk to them about... Okay, I can endorse know. that. For <laughs> instance, well, so I'm for instance to, uh, that's how I met Adam. I'm going to community college right now, but I was thinking about transferring to university. I know there's one in Dallas that has a good animation program. Great, that's even more schools to pull from, as far as the as far as Yeah, as far as yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're expanding your uh, <coughs> alumni yeah. Yeah. right here. And the Dallas second, has real effects out there. I worked on Jimmy Neutron out there. There's a huge animation community in Dallas. And the second benefit is to get to know your classmates, because they're going to be your peers when you're working in the industry. And you're all going to be able to hire each other. So get to know them, collaborate with them now, figure out who you're really simpatico with, and stay in touch. Because even if you don't work right away, one of them might and bring you along. Yeah, exactly. And vice versa, you never know. Misery loves company. And this applies to <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Oh wait, take something from up here. You ask the question. You ask the question, like get, you get first choice. Start thinking about it. <laughs> She's like, wait for it. All right, right. after this, what's your question? The egg pooper was that one over it there. It eggs. <laughs> the egg pooper is off the board. Yes. Um, when I grow up, I want to be an animator, but I'm concerned of what college I should go to. And I'm, and I'm very fascinated with the anime and manga business. And um, I want to go into that business, but my friend Hope um, says you have to eat Japanese and live and pretend to do it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I don't know, but what's the best university to go to if you want to be an animator? Like, because the reason why is because my have too many ideas I can't contain. <laughs> it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Uh, what are the good programs? Unfortunately, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. No. Depends which avenue you want to go. Once again, you're, you're going into the, your, the alumni association. Uh, and it does, it's not a guarantee, because I teach at Cal Arts a lot, I've taught at Otis in LA, I've taught at the Art Institute. If somebody's really good and they're gonna work hard and they're talented, they're going to, uh, you know, they're gonna be able to take advantage of it because they have those opportunities. But they're, you know, if you're wanting to go into industrial design or design shoes for Nike or cars for Nissan, then that, you know, then I recommend the Art Institute. If you want to go into traditional animation and work at Cartoon Network, then I'm gonna recommend Cal Arts. If you're wanting to go into video games, that field is so wide open. Uh, Full Sail down in uh, Florida recruits a lot. Of, there's a lot of people that get recruited out of there. Um, the game company I was, I was at recently was pulling almost everybody out of Full Sail. And it was because one of the guys used to be a professor at Full Sail. So 
he knew who to call over at Full Sail. And once again, it's that alumni thing and say, hey, do you have any talented kids? Because we need some guys. We're a new company. We don't, we're not paying top dollar, but they were paying professional rates. It was just at the beginning end. So they're like, all right, let's, let's get a whole lot of kids into the industry. So uh, it really just depends like what you want to do. I know people that go to uh, small schools in the middle of nowhere uh, that have a really great professor who used to do the job, and so they're getting access right. to that knowledge. So it, where you go to school shouldn't limit you at all. I mean, it's really, the professors can only give you so much. If you're a hardworking, motivated person, there's, you guys have the internet, we did not have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to move to Los Angeles. Carrier <laughs> There's this weird invention, the <laughs> earwebs, <laughs> We used to have to drive three states away to find a guy who heard knew a guy right. who had a front porch without a shotgun situation. Willing <laughs> <laughs> to go up and knock, you know, and say, like, could you tell me about breaking into this business? Get off my porch. What? <laughs> what do you mean, break into my house? Oh, yeah. business, business, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> so that's, that's, those are some recommendations. And in terms of, of wanting to do something that someone tells you, oh, you can't do that from here, but go back to what Jason said, which is don't everyone's going to tell you no until somebody tells you yes. There's so many cartoons and animation that are inspired by all different things. You know, there's American stuff that's inspired by anime that you could work on. You could do your own that's inspired by that stuff, too. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Especially not Hulk. Yeah, yeah. not Hulk. <laughs> 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 we'll tell Hulk for us. Did you want to be until I should tell her to shut the hell up? I don't yeah. Know you know what? You tell Hulk we all said shut the hell up. <laughs> of what it is you can do. And if it's if it's gonna be awesome in 2D, great. If it's going to be just all right in 3D, maybe you could try it and do something else. But also do what best serves the project. Yeah, what best serves what you feel is the mood of the project. Uh, and also, you, you have a chance to put yourself out there on the YouTube yeah. channel. Like there's, yeah. a, you know, all I have is taken around as a tape to people when I was getting into the business, and then a CD, and then, you know, but now you have this wonderful platform so you can work on it a lot you can even let certain people see it and get their feedback before you let the entire world see yeah. it you have all that flexibility so just don't stop just do and you don't you don't need permission no and make no mistake what's <laughs> places it's like are, somebody else's character are, are looking online for new talent all the time and like YouTube and Vimeo and all these platforms are absolutely what they're looking for. Frederator? Yeah, Frederator. They're absolutely, except if you're in Ravenclaw. Then they're like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> You're not in Ravenclaw. Oh, oh no. yeah. That's embarrassing. Yeah, but that's yeah. like Slytherin too, so. Slytherin, okay, good, all right. Wow. Talk about nature. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good question, come get some. <laughs> to do. So give you permission to go on the internet. 
first, then, and then you can go and check out their submissions policies. And they'll say, we want to see this in your portfolio. We want to see so many life drawings. So go to the zoo and draw. I highly recommend that because the first thing that'll happen when you get your job is they're going to go, are you going to go draw that thing you're really horrible at drawing? So it's good to not be horrible at anything. So the stuff you don't like drawing, that's the stuff you should be drawing the yeah. most of. Um, if you don't like drawing cars, draw lots of cars, because they may go, well, we only have a job for animating these cars, because we don't call cars. <laughs> <laughs> portfolio, that's a good thing. So that would be the first thing I would do, is just go on. If there's a specific company you want to go work for, go see what it is that they want you to be. A lot of them do internships as well. Uh, and, and good for you for being focused. Like, stay focused right? on it and yeah. keep telling everybody that's what you want to do. Yeah. And keep moving towards it, because eventually you will get there. Like nothing is better than just that ambition and and focus. Absolutely. You will gain momentum. Yeah. Good luck. Good yeah. luck. I don't think you're going to get two prizes. <laughs> okay, um, so the first question is, um, what would be a good like state to move to for like a video game industry? A happy state. State of creativity. Yeah. State of <laughs> like Washington or New York or California. Yeah. I, I, would, I would only say be open to moving. Not necessarily. Uh, you know, if there is, if you, okay, you have friends in any of the states you just threw out. That's always a good thing because you know if you've got a network. I moved to Orlando, Florida, to break into comics because I thought I'd be breaking into TV there because I knew a guy there. Drove all the way from the West Coast to Florida, ran into a buddy at a comic shop and said they were hiring an image, and then turned around and had to drive all the way back. So it was a good drive. I was very tired that week. But without the drive, you never would have had it. It, it, it all works out sometimes. So that's really important. But people in the gaming industry, it's not, you tend to work on project to project. So everybody I know that works in games has had to move from one state to another every couple of years. There's very rarely are you in the same place for very long. And if you want to stay in the game industry, you have to be willing to move. There's, there are only a handful, and I say handful, and I don't, it's not even a full five companies where you're gonna go and work for very long. Blizzard down in Southern California is one of them. Um, uh, Sony just shut down everything down in San Diego and it's been there for 10 years and that was an anomaly. That wasn't a normal thing to have. I mean, we had a job to be here for 10 years. Two weeks, still has a lot going on. Yeah, and the nice thing about a place like Austin or like Washington is if you do get laid off at that job, and everybody gets laid off. That's some, don't, that's just yeah. part you're of actually it. perpetually laid off. The yeah. other side is the anomaly when you're actually yeah. Two kinds of jobs. Jobs you've lost and jobs you haven't lost yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So that's the, you know, just pick a place that seems like it'd be a nice place for you to live or just apply everywhere and then the first one that gets you in, that's where you go. Okay. okay cool. All right, what else? The second question is, second question. what are good companies to start out with? Like, um, I'm still in high school, but after, you know, four years of wonderful college, um, where should I start? I would start before you graduate college. I yes, would yeah. get an internship yeah. if you can. And I would say there's no really bad place. Right, I was going to say, if there's any company you could not see yourself working for, like you, I don't know, for whatever reason, right. you didn't like something they did or there was a harassment thing or whatever, that you, other than that, all of them. Like if you yeah. don't have one, you have some aversion to for some reason, then everybody else is gay. Well, I'll teach you something. Yeah. Okay, and then, um, so I'm, um, I have an internship right now to be an environmental artist for this one game company called uh, Teeny Templates. And funny story, I don't know how to do environments. So any <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do, but they, my, more, my uh, Nobody for the Teeny uh, Company uh, work is yeah. right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> You and I qualify for that same internship. That's fantastic. <laughs> and that's exactly, it's, it's like what that other young girl said, like it, it's absolutely the way your first gigs work, is yeah. that you are thrown into the deep end of something and you do not know how to do it. And that's maybe better because you don't know what rules you're breaking, but 
it will also be a nice learning curve. You'll have to learn very quickly on the job. Certainly don't tell anybody there. You don't know what you're doing? They'll figure it out. <laughs> they'll figure it out. <laughs> but they'll either know or they'll end up higher. Just go. But that's that's great. And, and right after the convention, I want you to go on the internet and look up as much as you can yeah. before tomorrow morning. Stay at work. Start learning <laughs> about it. That's right. Do you have any websites to suggest like for learning how to there's this bizarre search engine called Google. <laughs> <laughs> so, like some websites just know so much and they're not. Okay, uh, the, 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 for people who want it, it's a 2D, 3D company. Three. Uh, no, G N O M O N. Uh, G N what? G N. The worst spelling ever. I don't know what the guys were thinking when they started school. There were some friends of mine who used to be at another school that didn't pay you. They're like, well, I'm I'm dude, I can't give this domain name. It just <laughs> You didn't know me. Go to the keyboard and go like this. They, they have DVDs, they have tutorials online, they have all kinds of stuff. Right. Right. LA and take classes. Wow. Everybody that works there is currently doing whatever they're talking about. So you're cool. learning right. people that Smart. got off we're gonna, work. We're going we're gonna to cut you off and leave this because we have so many other people yeah. that are in line behind. But afterwards, if you want to come up and ask us. Yeah. yeah, no, that's great. Good work. Good work. Nice cosplay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, so both of my parents have worked in the computer animation basically since it started, and they did mostly like advertisement and like sport animations for sports teams. So they did for my sons and back stuff. But they have friends in like Hollywood um, animation type businesses. What are their numbers? Yeah, you're all set. Yeah. <laughs> But, do you have a card? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Um, or a hologram? Would you like to come sit up there? No. <laughs> they, they, um, many of their friends have gotten laid off or whatever, so they have quite a cynical view of sort of the industry in general, and I just wanted to know what your take on that is. We agree! It's not for everybody. You know, it's uh, a lot of people get in and their parents had the job where they're like, I got a job, I retired, we're on vacation. This is not that kind of career. Like, there is, this is, this is. <laughs> <laughs> Just the concept of that was so awesome. Yeah, what? Like, Man, I did this one show and I'm all done. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, he's right. I mean, it's, it, look, it's a, being a, a freelance creative is a sales job. So that means you're, you're, you're either doing a job or you're looking for a job. And that's it. You've got two seasons in your life. Right. Doing a job and looking for a job. And, and both can be great and both are awesome, but it's certainly not fulfilling for everyone. And if, if you're looking for security, it can be disappointing sometimes because you don't get it a lot. You know, and very rarely do you get any sort of sense of security. And so that can be hard. But look, I'm not cynical about it. I don't think these. I know yeah. these guys pretty well. They're yeah. not cynical about it. I think mean, it's a great community. Yes, yeah. loves what they do. Uh, also, if you want security, you could marry into an incredibly rich family. Right. I might have to pilot. I didn't even think about that. When I was oh, smart. Yeah. That's all. I'm only selling myself, and I'm also working in animation. <laughs> <laughs> How's business? <laughs> <laughs> Little short. Oh! 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 It's very uh, binary. And it's good for you guys to hear that too, because yeah. I think a lot of times when you go to schools, they're like, you know, you're gonna go, their job is to teach you, and they go, good luck, you know, you're gonna get jobs. And they don't tell you you're gonna get a job, you're gonna lose a job, and then you're gonna get another job, you're gonna lose yeah. that job. They whitewash it. Yeah, yeah. Because otherwise, you wouldn't spell my money to go to the school. Right? <laughs> so, you know, it's it's really important to know that like, hey, this is normal and this is okay. Yeah. You know, you're you're gonna be able to have a fun, fulfilling career in this, but. It's a, it comes down to a personality type. Like, can you handle the fact that, like, oh, I, the show, and, and when we say layoff, I mean, that's just how we approach it to make ourselves, it's, it's the reality of it. But really, you know, you're on the show, season one ends, and they're like, we'll see you again in six months. And you're like, I cannot not get paid for six months. Mm -hmm. I haven't had no premiums right. to get paid over there. 
And then they call you back in six months, but you're over at DreamWorks, and then DreamWorks wraps up, and then you're over at Nickelodeon, and then you're over somewhere else. That's the reality of it. It's not that they don't want you back, it's just there are these time periods sometimes between point A and point B, that if you are married and have a kid, that yeah. you're like, I can't not be three people. That will make months. you cynical, I can imagine. Yeah. yeah, and especially if you're thinking, you know, I'm good enough and I should be working. I worked before, I should work now. That sometimes has absolutely nothing to do with it. That doesn't make you any less good yeah. at your job. It just means that's the nature of this job. You're also fighting tremendously talented people. I mean, anytime I work, I know I had to beat out some incredibly amazing people and I'm just plain grateful for that, period. Oh, let me get something. I'm going into my junior year of high school next year, and I'm a little discouraged by the seeming lack of resources available. Yeah. And I just felt like when every time that I look something up on Google, I just feel like it's erasing to like another dead end or something. And I feel like I have some potential to potentially, I guess, sorry, um, have like a career in this field, but like. I just don't know where to start. And I feel like I should develop some skills like now, and I don't want everyone to leave, so what do you guys think? What do you want to do? Um, I am thinking animation, like 3D animation, or something that's like around the lines of video game design and stuff. Well, you can, you can start by taking some classes with the computer and run those kinds of programs. Uh, certainly, I would think. Um, I'm just not a 3D animator, but yeah. my, my gut feeling is that there are so many small independent games like being made all the, all the time and everywhere, yeah. little stuff that it shouldn't be that hard to get at least to touch some of that. Even if it's just to be, I don't know, a tester, whatever. But then you're like, hey, by the way, I just thought I'd show you this thing I designed. It all kind of always works that way, but you just have to reach out and try to use it. And I have an awesome website that I can just point to. That's like, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Now you do. Yeah, right? I can't even spell it. Murfnarf.com? Um, <laughs> I can't name <laughs> this.com. But you I mean, the fact that you're motivated enough and aware enough to notice that puts you ahead of a lot of people. Because so many, if these jobs were just handed out left and right, everybody would be doing it because they're fun. Yeah. Um, they're not. And, and we make it look like everybody's doing it, but yeah. <laughs> we've been pushing for a long time. It really is up to everybody in here, if this is really what you want to do, to go and make it happen for yourself. You've got such an incredible tool with the Google, uh, to where you can just go <laughs> <throw it out. laughs> With the and Google! It, it may be a dead end, but then the next one may not, and so just keep plugging away, and don't wait for somebody to teach you. Go out there and find the resources to make it happen. Because uh, you can do online tutorials now. You can, you can drive. I had to, like I said, I had to drive very far away to go make it happen. Uh, how many people like watching TV? Yeah. All right. Yeah. How many people like playing video games? Yeah. All right. Yeah. How many of you could give all of that up for three years like I did to get really good at my craft where I didn't go out on Friday nights in college, I didn't watch TV, I still don't watch much TV because I can get a lot more of my own stuff. So you've got to have that drive of like, you know what, there's stuff I'm willing to give up and you got to figure out what that stuff is. And sometimes it's finances. Like, I'm going to invest $4,000 in myself to learn this program. Right. That's all the money I plan to save up to go do something fun or to have a cell phone. Do you need a cell phone? Do you need, you know, it's, it's you start thinking But you're investing in yourself. You which, are, what right? else are you going to spend? Long-term investment in you. Because you want to ultimately do that. Look like it, else, but it, it fills you with joy. Those other things are temporary pleasures, but this is going to fill you with long term joy. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.
like the best thing for me is to when I'm trying to crack a problem, you you go up against it like really hard. You're like, I gotta figure it out. I gotta figure it out. It always comes to you in the shower or washing dishes or like something when you're not trying to break it anymore. You are doing something else and that's when the idea comes to you. So I find that I need to sort of load in the background and go do something else. Right. And for me, I don't know about these guys, I, I have to have input. Like I have to fill the well. I want to go to the movies or I want to go to a museum or I want to go for a walk. I need to like get other things into my brain and then that inevitably gives me an answer. Because I go, oh my gosh, I hadn't thought of that's a great idea. Oh wait, if I pull this, it can connect to this, and then everything starts locking together. So for me, I sort of have to distract my brain and go, don't look over here, don't look over here, let's go do this. And then while I'm doing this, my brain goes, oh wait, I looked over here, now I have the answer. So that's a really lo-fi way to, fit, to do it for that's me. Good. That's good. Um, I'll give you the best piece of advice I got, which is, uh, this is like uh, an actual thing you can do. Um, go down to a newsstand if you know where one is, if there is still one in Arizona. What is this newsstand? Exactly. And buy three magazines that you wouldn't normally buy. Yeah. Cat Fancy, Guns and Ammo, Field and Stream, whatever. If you don't know you, you might buy all of them. You, you may have subscriptions. Those are for example. Yeah, those may be your three favorite. And yeah. They work. But three that you wouldn't normally buy. And don't worry about reading the articles, just page through them quickly, look at the ads, look at the headlines, look at the articles, and free associate. Write down anything that occurs to you, and it's going to read like gibberish the first time you go back and look at it, but it may spark something in you. So just free associate, and then after you're done, go back and look at that ad and see if any ideas occur. And you'll be surprised how many ideas you get out of that. Yeah, that's yeah, a great idea. It really helps. Or you can go to the public library, aka Barnes and Noble. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever For the writers again, and the director, how would you? I'm sorry. How would you create emotion in your writing, like such powerful, intense emotions? Like whenever you're dealing with like an intense scene, like how would you build up the emotion into that in order to create like a climax? Well, it, it's all about character. If you care about the character, we're going to care about the scene. And if the character is going through emotional turmoil, and we are on board for that character's journey we're gonna care. If, inevitably, if that is not firing, if that's not landing with people, then it's on the setup. Then the setup isn't strong enough that we have not clicked into that journey with that character. So if you're showing it to people and they're not getting that emotional response that you're looking for, you have to sort of go back and go, okay, my piece, my, my setup isn't adding up yet. Um, not knowing anything about your piece, that's, that's the best yeah. thing I can think of. But really, it's all about character. So if, we're, if we love that character, and that character is going through emotional turmoil, we, we are there with them. It's relatable, it's sympathetic. Um, other yeah. thoughts? I was just gonna say that nothing in your life happens in isolation. Mm -hmm. Like, as a human being, nothing that we go through day to day by day happens just by itself. And what he said is, is I feel the exact same way. As an actor, I only get to have that emotional payoff when I truly understand all of the things that my character has gone through up to that moment. And so if I've really lived those, I've thought about those, I've owned all of that, this moment is just the natural next piece of the puzzle. It's just the way that it evolves to happen. You don't have to push to make that happen, it just will if you own the rest of it. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a Bachelor's of Arts in Animation and Design from the Art Institute of Phoenix, oh, nice. and uh, I graduated in 2009. Um, I've struggled with contract artwork and animation jobs throughout the ballet and, uh, and various other places, online submissions and stuff. Um, and the thing I struggled with both in, in getting into the game industry and animation industry was um, just the overwhelming feeling of just no one cares anymore. There's an abundance, there's an overflow of artists and designers out there. So what it eventually happens, you just get jaded and you get burdened and the elephant grows to a mountain and suddenly you're carrying Kilimanjaro on your back. My challenge or my question to you is when you feel that sensation of overwhelming, just jadedness, 
How do you how do you how do you withdraw, retract, and, and, and let yourself recuperate to the point where you feel like you can then climb Kilimanjaro and tackle the beast? It's a great question. Yeah, that's a great question. I I'll go quick because it will have less to do with me. I try to do something as purely creative as possible, right? Because all that has to do with the business aspect of it. It really has to do with the non-creative portions of it that you can't seem to control, and so. Whether, and these days, you can do your own project and still make it available for people. And so, just as a quick example, like my shows went off the air, I had Green Lantern went off the air, so did No Justice, so did Clone Wars, right? I went ahead and I made these little YouTube videos, has anybody seen these? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Of the characters that I played in those shows, doing little bits of epilogue or, you know, reading children's books or whatever, just as a purely creative exercise because I missed those characters and to purposefully not be doing it. Awesome, thank you very much. I think much. Jason's right on. Uh, create something for yourself. Uh, do something without worrying about who's going to see it or what it's going to bring you, and do something that makes you happy. Draw something, uh, create something that you want to do, that you want to see. And that passion that you have for that project likely will show, and other people will notice, and something good can come of it. If not, you've still done something for yourself and made yourself happy with the project you're working on. That yeah. will exist forever. This is right. one of the best times to go out and do something on too. I mean, you can do a Kickstarter, you can do an Indigo, you can fund a project, you know, and you can set a specific, like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to make this thing, and I'm going to make it for me. And I, I think that's the absolute best advice. Just pivot and do something, because we've all felt that. You can yeah, only push, sure. push that boulder up the hill so, one project can only get pushed so far. Yeah. So that's why all of us have, you have to have multiple projects. You have to have multiple irons in the fire, and you can only push all of them up the hill like one inch a week. So at some point you go, all right, I gotta, I gotta put something back into my own control. So you pivot and you go, I'm gonna make my own comic, or I'm gonna do a podcast, or I'm gonna do a designs for a video game that doesn't exist yet because I love this idea. Whatever it is, but but like Shannon said, that passion reads, and someone's gonna go, and, and it could be the best work you've ever done because you pick the thing that everyone goes, that will never sell. You will never do that. <laughs> right. And that's the thing that people are gonna freak out. Like I did that with I did that with a, a script with a whole idea that was called Aim High, and, and everyone told me do not do that. It's the worst idea. No one's gonna buy this idea. It was about a high school hitman for the U.S. government. And like, <laughs> anybody who would they were like anyone who would do a a, a, a school show is not gonna want to do an assassination show. And anyone who would do an assassination show is not gonna do a school show. And they were like whatever. And I wrote it and we I sold it and I made it for Warner Brothers. 2012, and I won an award for it. So it's like, that was my passion, and I knew this was a fun idea, and and I think that's all great advice. Awesome, thank you guys very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That seems a little like this first thing. I think the letter is just really short. <laughs> um, is that like true or false? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you, look, you could you, you can always get out. You can have any. You can always yeah. leave. Uh, I, I guess it's the question: uh, Do you make enough money to stay in it? Is there enough money to save? I mean, it kind of depends on who you are. I'll yeah. let you know. Right. <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you a quick example. So let's say that I had done tons of voiceover work, I had a great career, very fulfilling, and I just kind of wanted to drop the business side of it. I would still go to the public library and read stories for kids with voices in it. Okay? So would that, <laughs> would that be me retired? I don't think I would ever leave my creativity behind. I just don't think I would. Would I leave the business behind? I don't know if I got to that point where I just didn't need it anymore. Yeah, I mean, financially, I mean, it's the same as a guy that starts his own air conditioning repair business. That guy is responsible for setting a 401k plan for himself and putting money in the bank and saving it. And, you 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? I know. <laughs> yeah, no, I have told you this. That's what I'm going. Like, look, the freelancing is on you. You are the, the CEO of your own company, so you're in charge of taking care of yourself, and that means saving, and that means investing, and that means doing the smart thing. And uh, those feel like very big and grown up things to talk about, but the truth is, like, when you're a freelancer, it is all on you. Like, that is your job, and you have to be responsible, and that's hard, and, and it's not hard. And we are in guilds and unions as the Writers sure. Guild and the Animation Guild, and we're, yeah, exact. I mean, so depending on what any of us are working on or doing, there are retirement programs and stuff that we're all part of, and yeah. institutions, so better set up. Thanks. Cool, Thanks. thank you. Yeah. 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 Let's get everybody in line. Thank oh, hello. you. Um, Hello again. Again. Uh, what animation programs do you guys use? Oh, good question. Software. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like one for computers. Um, yeah, Photoshop. Yeah. Um, what program do you suggest for beginners? Like, like I want to make this picture move. Um, what program do you suggest? Photoshop, because yeah, then you have to memorize one thing, and then as you get jobs and you can do other stuff. We, we did a, a Dragon Lance movie that came back five minutes short. So the producer and I animated five minutes of footage. That's I mean, it's Photoshop. That's the only, only program we knew. We were we like, well, it's one drawing after another drawing after another drawing. So let's just write those drawings down. You <laughs> <laughs> flip down the layers and burrows. There are stuff. other programs, but if you got that one down, you can do it. Like, I'm on this Thompson chain for animation <laughs> programs because um, I have a Mac and I try to because the best animation programs like that I found from internet animators. Um, we're on um, PC and I got a Mac. And what are any things that you suggest for the Mac? Photoshop. Photoshop. <laughs> Get a PC. Parallels, <laughs> <laughs> right now. All right, let's go to the. All right, Blender. good question. Thank you. Somebody asked this before too. Blender is free. I, don't, I, don't, I think there's a Mac version of Blender. And there's lots of tutorials. Yeah. yeah. And Maya has a student edition. For yeah, it does. Yeah. Good call. Thank you. Right. Photoshop video is awesome too. It's amazing. They're, 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 they're all just tools. So whatever is the one that you can get the cheapest that you can learn the quickest, start with that one. Hi there. Hey. Hi. That was basically my question. Uh, <laughs> well, come and get, get something. Come right. and get something. This is, um, is there any specific thing that's better for like 3D animation or? Maya. 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 Oh, Maya. So, unless you're getting a yeah. job at a lightweight studio, and unless you're getting a job at a place that's got proprietary software. So when it, once again, it's all up here. The, the software is just a tool. If you ask me to do a drawing with a charcoal pencil or this kind of pencil, I can still do a drawing because I know how to draw. I may like one over the other. So whatever you can get access to that teaches you how to animate, that's the important part. The software, the studios change them every so often. I was yeah. looking recently at uh, like, why are we having to use this new software? It's like, oh, because some software salesman talked the boss. Right. <laughs> and we all are going back to kindergarten. And I'm like, all right, so Jeez. we were doing it the old fashioned way over here. I'm going, oh, yeah. and then we put it in this program. But at the end of the day, it's because we knew how to do the job. It's not because of the software. You know, there's, you know. So anyway, just, just whatever you can get access to, that's what you should be getting. And just one more little curiosity. Okay. Yes. Have you ever like done like one small part of a drawing that took you like forever, and then the rest of the drawing like took you half that time? That happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it right. <laughs> I spent a good sixteen hours drawing just chainmail in Adobe Illustrator. If you want to get into animation now, uh, have your your little brother sort of walk up and crumble it all up and go, "That's wrong. Do it again." And then, that, then you'll be able to do the job. Is there a job uh, that I ever do that I feel is precious? I used to, you know, when you're younger, you're like, I'll never be able to draw this again as good as I did. You will. You'll you get over that, and then you'll just be like, yeah, there you go. It's perfect. Boom. Perfect again. I'm so good. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> Smell this perfection. Yeah. It's coming at you. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just keep drawing. That's the, that's the main thing. Good question. some sort of an animation or cartoon or anything like a series that you have applied a voice 
that you yourself have thought deserved a different type of accent or however you come up with your voices. And for the guys, have you ever drawn something and it had the voice applied to it and thought that voice does not fit my character as a druid? I'm going to be perfectly honest that anytime somebody wants me to make a voice, I am just happy. Like, if, if they're like, that fits the character, great. And if somebody didn't like it or wanted me to change it, I'm like, I'll change it on the spot. Tell me what you want. Uh, for example, uh, there was a show I was going in for for Disney that hasn't been produced yet. It had something to do with lions, kings, things like that. And uh. they wanted a, they wanted a, um, they were not going to be made, but they, they wanted a villain, a bad guy. And the first, um, bad guy, it was like a hyena, like higher up villain. The first thing they, they drew was really skinny, scrawny, like, like you could tell he was more like, I can't wait to get my hands on that lion cow. <laughs> Shut up, you fool! <laughs> you know, very intellectually bad. When I went in to do the callback, they had shown me a totally different piece of artwork, and he was this buff, brutish bulldog looking villain. And I was like, oh, okay, totally had something else prepared. <laughs> so they're like, the artwork has changed. And so in a second, you're like, I'll go up into the idea. How about we eat you for lunch? <laughs> just change it. <laughs> <laughs> Because if you're standing there in front of Disney people and you go, well, you know, that's not really what I had prepared. Yeah, it's just not going to do the job. <laughs> right. But instead, if you just let your imagination go, like a kid, there's no wrong answer. If you just go, that's what this is about. It's about being creative. So did you go. <laughs> and for the artist, I'm like, have you ever actually seen your artwork? I didn't have some sort of a voice. I felt that wasn't what I had in my mind. Mm -hmm. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, not really, because usually you've got the voice before you start, uh, you know, so in, in my case, I mean, I've had things where they had me put a cape on Spider-Man and took me down to Comic Con to explain why I put a cape on Spider-Man. Wow. I didn't want to put a cape on Spider-Man, but at the end of the day, even though we're all fans of stuff, this is a career, it's a job, and sometimes you have to go, oh yeah, boss. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, you still want me to do that? All right, he is going to have the best cape he has ever had. <laughs> and that's the job part of it. So, yeah. so um, I feel kind of embarrassing, embarrassed to ask this since there were already two people who were going to ask who asked something like this. But okay. so my school, because the from the sixth through twelfth grade, they get no field trips whatsoever. They do term projects at the end of the year, and they're kind of random. So I did digital flipbook animation, and we used Photoshop for that. However, my dad was not able to make it to the uh, showcase for all the term projects, and he wanted to see it, so I took it home on a flash drive. And since we do not have Adobe Photoshop, it wouldn't open. Mm -hmm. And so I was just wondering if you have any idea about any websites or anything that I should use to convert that into, into a flipbook animation again. Um, because we tried doing that and it didn't work. So do you have any ideas of how to do that or what tool to use in order to do that? Is it all just a series of PSDs that you saved? Uh, yes. Then you could just convert it into a PDF and it's really, I use that for storyboarding, you just click through and it makes animation. Action scene. It slows down. Yeah. Well, it's a really I didn't do enough storyboard drawing, so I'm going to pretend like. I did that, but on top of that, it was already into Adobe Photoshop, and um, I wasn't able to get the originals because for some odd reason, one of my two partners, the idiotic teen boy, who really, when I say idiotic, I, I do not mean to be mean to any teenage boys in here. I really well, there do. are no idiot teen boys in this room. <laughs> Don't you worry about that. We didn't let him in. I don't mean to be insulting, it's just this guy was really stupid. Take the flash drive over to Staples. Is his name Photoshop? Honestly, I feel kind of bad because everybody calls him E.T. since his initials are E.T. But honestly, that movie is way too, way too good to be have him. Wow. Oh, she's staring at me like, please do a voice now. <laughs> 
This is a, we're witnessing the beginning of a super villain here. So let's not pile on this poor kid. Yeah. <laughs> what should I do with that so that I don't mess it up? And what can I use to read yeah, so it? Take, take a peek at those staples. They have a computer you can Photoshop very cool. You can pay like the five dollars an hour or whatever, and you can sit there and convert it. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Check. Good oh. question. <laughs> One of the difficulties I faced was finding a job that didn't have the requirement of three to five years of experience in the industry. So this can actually apply to all of you who have seen new people come in. How have you seen them overcome that, oh, I don't have the three to five years of experience, but here's my portfolio, please? Uh, going to shows like this, A, where you have access directly to the person doing the hiring, there's lots of game conventions, uh, which could get you into doing animations or games, and then if you don't want to be a game person, you can use that portfolio to get out of game, you get into traditional animation, whether that's traditional 3D or animation. Or also, back to internships. Internships. Uh, if you're there, <laughs> you're on their mind. They know that you're there, they can see the work you're doing every day. I, I think that's good. Be, be willing to do anything. If they're not going to let you work on a game, but you can work on an interstitial, or you can work on a design, and you can work on one little thing, like when I started, I was like, I'll do, uh, I'll do commercials, I'll do the ad, I'll do anything. I don't care. Just give me a shot at doing something, and then I'll work my way up. I, I don't care what it is. Just let me be around. Team up with the other guy that had the bachelor of arts. Yeah, that, right. You guys okay. Do some crowdfunding. Yeah, actually just, make a short film that. together. Mm -hmm. something. The, the, three, the three to five years they put on there is to discourage people from applying. It's, there's, they're not one man. This guy's got 2.5, but he's so good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they just got another month. <laughs> yeah. they're, they're really just putting that on there to, to let you know they would prefer somebody that knows what they're doing. But they don't have time to train. That's basically what yeah. that means. So if you know what you're doing, you just got to be able to get your stuff. And the way to get your stuff seen is to have other people see your stuff, talk about your stuff. So whether that's crowdfunding and doing your own film, going to these shows. I mean, there's there's so many ways around. Good question. Hello. Hello. Um, I am interested in designing creatures in animation and games or what have you. Designing mythological creatures. And I'm wondering, would I have to go down the same route as someone who wants to do uh, character development, or would I choose a specific field? In other words, would I take any animation design job handed to me, or would I take a specific one? Because I'm worried if I take just any, I might end up in a place that's totally far from what I want to do. Right. Take any. Take any. Take any. Get in. Uh, there's the two career paths. You're trying to get the job to be known as a monster designer for the video game companies. That's a very, you've narrowed your niche very small. And then there's uh, people who go out and become, they do book covers, and they're famous artists that everybody knows. Uh, Charles Lee, um, I'm on his name, the guy who did all the artwork for uh, the Tolkien movies. Okay. He was just happy doing book covers. And uh, Peter Jackson's like, oh, this guy does cool stuff. Now he's in the movie business. And because he was famous for doing a certain thing. Bob Eagleton, who was uh, an amazing Godzilla artist. The dude just loves painting Godzilla. Nobody asked him to. He just painted them over and over again. Finally, next thing you know, Toho's one. We paint Godzilla for us. Then he's an official Godzilla artist. We did the Jimmy Neutron movie. We had a character who was like Godzilla. I'm like, we should get Bob to come in and design That's a great movie. Because he's awesome. a Godzilla guy. So there's, there's always workarounds. But you know, if you've got somebody wanting to hire you right now, you take the job. Okay. I, I don't know, but I will. And, and do, and do the, the, the other stuff on your spare time and keep doing it and show people. Yeah. Like, okay. hey, I'm doing props now, but here's what I love. You know? There are plenty of people I work with that were just deviant art artists years yeah. ago that are now art directors yeah. at Warner Brothers and DreamWorks oh, and other places I work with. So, so you know, it's, you know, other artists see it and they're like, yeah, it's cool. I've got stuff. She's great. You should hire her. Bring her in. Sure. You know? Yeah. All right, you know what? Have left something. Three things left. No, right? I love this on the way. So my question is about whenever I animate like super choppy, even when I make the movements like really small from like screen to screen, how do you fix that? Because it's 
don't take the computer, you just whack it. <laughs> With Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop box. <laughs> So, I mean, there's so this is such a this could be we could be here for hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> minor IT question. My, yeah, my advice would be uh, you know, without having seen it, find somebody that knows what they're doing and show them the very specific problem you're having. It could be two softwares not being compatible, it could be that you need to do more drawings in between the drawings that you have, it could be you have too many drawings in between the drawings you have, and you're not getting the effect you want. Uh, sometimes for comedy, it's better to have better fun than it is to have all fluid, smooth motion. <coughs> Um, anime works awesome because they do a two really great drawings and they'll slide them slowly. It gives a mood, uh, and you know it's a totally different way than what traditional animation used to do. But we're seeing more and more. When we worked on Teen Titans, we were borrowing a lot of stuff from Japanese Fuli Fuli specifically. So um, I, I can't. There is no right answer for that one other than you've got to find somebody and show them the little segment that you're having a problem with. Better answer than me. I was going to say, have you tried turning the project off and then turning it back on? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to be my. Have you had a peanut butter and jelly? I'm going to see you wrong. Oh, I'm going to see you wrong. You're welcome. Come get one of these. Yeah. Two things. Well, it's over. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is more of a question of curiosity from your point of view. As far as adapting a comic into an animation or vice versa. I've heard that uh, for animation, it's better to have a simpler look, um, not so detailed as it is, as opposed to a dedicated comic. My question is, what is your view from translating one to the other? Well, I can't speak from a design point of view, but working with the guys at Warner Brothers adapting like Justice League War or Throne of Atlantis, I know that Phil Bussara is interested, the character designer, is interested in capturing the essence of these characters, but still making something simple enough to be able to replicate. Uh, things that are really ultra detailed become problems down the road because they become very, very expensive. If that's not an issue for you and your project, go for it. But with the budgets, I mean, it's still a business on that end that I'm talking about. So with their budget, it becomes very important that they boil down the characters to the simplest amount of lines that still make it iconic. So it's not the best answer, but it really sort of goes with what, whatever your budget is and what, what you could do. Would I like it to be as detailed as like an Alex Ross King to become painting? Absolutely, that would be right. But that's a hundred million dollar budget and that's not what we have. For free, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to offer. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you. After you. Downstairs for the rest of the day. But if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Sonova, S O N N O V A. Yeah. Put up my last name, Beeching, you'll get an idea of what it's all about. Son of a. <laughs> so that's how you remember it, and you can ask me anything. It's a good joke because you have to explain it. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm at, at Hacky Corson, and yeah, you yell at me, give me your answer, give me your questions, whatever you want. We'll answer anything. At Shannon. At Jason underscore Speeder. Nice. Thank you guys so much!